Starting at the first verse, we're going to read verse 1, and then we're going to jump down to 8 and 28. It's a familiar passage of Scripture, 8 and 28. But we're going to read verse 1. We left off last week talking about me versus me and how there's no good thing in my flesh. Uh, all evil, wickedness, and, and envy, and jealousy, and all that uh, uh, are bound up in my flesh. So let us read uh, Romans 8, starting at verse 1, and then we'll jump over to 8 and 28. Yes, sir. The Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. If you don't mind, uh, turn or scroll down to Romans 8 and 28. And it says, And we know all that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purposes. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. 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 For the title of the subject. For this day's lesson, we are simply pending uh, condemnation versus conviction, that terminal disease of sin. That terminal disease of sin. But there's hope. There's hope for someone sitting here that may not know Jesus Christ is a part of your sin. There's yet hope for you. While the blood is running warm in your veins and you still have the breath of life coursing through your body, you still yet have another chance. Amen. Makes no difference what you may have done in your past, what your past, you, uh, your, your resume, your past uh, may speak of some terrible things in your life. You don't have to tell me what you did because all sin, the sin that we have committed, See, this is what God says. I love the sinner, but I hate the sin. I hate, I hate the sin. It's the sin that, that will separate us from God. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So that there is yet hope for you. Uh, as I was, uh, we're going through a study or a series of, of, of sermons dealing with sin and talking about the sin that separates us from God. And this is the thing. God knew from the day before he sent his son into the world to die for this world. God knew that we, we couldn't do anything without sin. It took a, a sinless savior to come to save a wretch like me. Hallelujah, I say wretch like me because I'm not looking at you. I'm not looking at your sin. I'm not looking at what you did. I'm just talking about what Pastor Rich did. See, uh, I'm all, we all in the same boat. Yeah. We, we, we was, we was up, uh, going up that creek without a paddle. Yeah. I know the creek I'm talking about. Right. We was hopeless. We was, we was lost right. without a savior. Now, yeah. I don't know about you. you. You may be making it day to day. You may think that you wake your own self. You may have pulled yourself up by your own bull, your bootstraps. And you might be a self-made man, woman, boy, or a girl. But I come out here to tell you that it was not your long fly that woke you up this morning. It was the love of Christ. And, 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 and sometimes he's withholding his wrath. Because I used to wonder when I was a kid, I said, well, I, I keep hearing people say he's coming back. And I, 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 I always want to ask the question, well, why hasn't he come back yet? Well, he's waiting on me to get it. He's waiting on me to confess with my mouth. He's waiting on me. He loves me just enough to say, yeah. hey, I don't want to see you go to hell. So I'm withholding my wrath from you. That thing, that condemnation, that, that terminal disease, uh, which is called sin in our life, it, it's a deadly thing. It, it's a thing that if, until you get yourself uh, right with God, then you you have, you are the, 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 the the, the wrath of God is, is over your head. It's, it's, it's hell for those that uh, choose not to accept Christ in the life. I wish there was some other way. I wish there was another way, but uh, this is the gospel. This is the truth. Uh, uh, and, and all you got to do is look around you and see all the 
hell that's breaking out in our world today. All the separation and all young people as well as old people are dying today. But God, hallelujah somebody, is there not enough change? There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Paul was preaching this to the Roman Christians in Rome, as well as the Jews in Rome. And, and what, was, what he was saying is that I know coming, the Jews at, at one point thought that all Christianity was just reserved for them. If you wasn't a Jew, then you were, you, you were just out of luck. But what Paul is teaching here is that whosoever would confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that God raised his son from the dead, you are yet saved. The God Almighty. So therefore, there is now no condemnation. Simply means that conviction shall come. But he will not condemn you to a sentence. The God Almighty. Understand what I'm saying here. You know when you do something wrong and and you are so godly sorry. You know there's something inside of you that even without Jesus being in your life, you know the difference between right and wrong. Right. Uh, yeah. you, you, you know, when we were kids, the mama used to say, don't, talk, don't touch the stove, it'll burn you. And how, you know, a curious kid just want to see. I'm going to touch it anyway. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just going to touch it because I, 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 I know mama said don't touch it or she baked some cookies and she said, uh, you can't have no cookies until I you eat your meal. And, and what did we do? I know I got some witnesses in here because I was a bad boy. Uh, and, and I'm going to give me a couple of cookies. And I ain't even got sense enough to wipe the crumbs off my face. And, and I'm trying to figure out how she knew that I ate the cookies. You got crumbs and chocolate chips all over your mouth. And, but, but the way you and this is how God is with us. God is not going to condemn you because you make a mistake. Right. But when you are a child of God, he will convict you. There's a difference between condemnation and conviction. Con conviction simply means I recognize I made a mistake. Sometimes, uh, my mama used to also say, I, I, I would rather you tell the truth than look me in my face and tell a lie. Because see, conviction is that I, I own up to what I have done. I own up. To, to uh, the mistake that I made. And see, God has given us an avenue of escape. He gave us an exit ramp off the highway of immorality. To God, and that exit ramp is called repentance. Yeah. Repentance simply means to turn from, to confess that, Lord, yeah, I am a sinner and I need your help. But see, it's a proud man. Pride goes before fall. Pride is, I don't need your help. Pride says, I can do it all by myself. I don't need God's help. How many folks in here, you, you, you're proud, you, you, you're thankful, you're proud of who you are. You, you're boastful about what you have accomplished. And you will even say out of your own mouth, it was me that did it. But I come out here to tell you, I remind you of a man that had uh, Bill Bourne, and he had Bill Great Bourne, and he put all his goods in the Bourne. And, and then he looked at the Bourne and said, oh, my Bourne ain't good enough. He tore those Bourne down and built more Bourne, bigger, greater Bourne. And then he, he, after building those Bourne, he looked and said, now I'll take my rest. And then that very night, uh, an angel of the Lord came to him and said, your soul, you, you wicked servant, is required of you because you didn't give God no praise. Oh, oh, so there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ yes. Jesus. Yes. Being in Christ Jesus does not mean that I go to church every Sunday. Right. right. Being in Christ Jesus simply means that I have a relationship with him. Yeah. And every so often, every, you know, uh, it, it's good to, before you go to sleep, get down on your knees and say, Lord, uh, watch over me as I take my sleep. Pray. You know, the song, the, 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 the prayer that we used to sing when we were, uh, we used to pray when, when we were kids, it said, now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, 
I pray the Lord my soul to take. Uh, even a kid has no sense to say, Lord, watch over me as I sleep and I slumber because I don't know what's going on around me. I don't know if somebody's going to break in the house and steal my life. I don't know if a tornado is going to come and blow the house down while I'm asleep. So it's good to pray before you go to bed. Then it's also good to pray when you get up from your sleep. Y'all y'all wake up there, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for watching over me. I, I, I thank you that even with sleep apnea, you didn't let me stop breathing in my sleep. I, I, Lord, I thank you that you kept the blood running warm in my veins because I was unconscious to the world. I didn't, I didn't have a clue. I didn't know what was going on around me. But Lord, you watched over me. It's an act of gratitude. It's an act of acknowledgement. But, but I know, I know even Christians, I know even some of us Christians, we take it for granted. We take things for granted. That, uh, yeah, you know, he woke me up and I ain't got to say thank you. <laughs> Somebody laid down last night and didn't wake up. They, they went to sleep and they woke up in, in, the, in the presence of God. So you ought to be thanking God for that. As I scroll down to this familiar text, what I'm, what I'm letting you know is that Paul was preaching to people who, uh, they live by the law. They tried to keep the law. They tried to keep the commandments of the law. And they always fell short. But when Paul was reminding them, it's only through Jesus Christ. You don't have to uh, sacrifice rams, bullets, and bullets, and, and, and turtle doves no more. But if you just confess Jesus and make him Lord of your life, Give him full course in your life, you shall be saved. 828 says, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. And to them who are called according to his purpose, all things work together for the good. The bad things. You know, the, the terrible things, the, the uh, things that happen in our life, God is able to turn them around for our good. Uh, the losses that we have suffered, the victories that we have won, God is able to turn them around for our good. But it's only for those reserved for those that have made God their choice. Only reserved for those that have made God their choice. And I, I, I come by to tell you, you can't get in on grandma's coattails. You got to get a personal relationship with God. You, you can't make it in on mama's coattails. You got to have a personal relationship with God. I know grandma was a godly woman. And I know you heard of, you seen a rocking and reeling uh, at, at the town. And she would be singing one of the old church hymns. But I come by and tell you that you got to see God for yourself. You got to make it in for yourself. And, 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 and we know that the God that we serve, uh, he, he loves us enough that even when the devil comes in and disrupts just, just our, our little uh, peace of mind, God is right there to make all things work together for the good. It, it, it's just like having a big brother. You know, when a big brother shows up, good God Almighty Stewart, I know. You, 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 you probably felt good when, when Tyrone showed up. Uh, the big brother and, 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 and Satchel, Satchel might not be able to help you, but when the big brother showed up, now I, I don't know, maybe you was the tough one, uh, sir. maybe it was when you showed up for uh, how long that, 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 that it turned around, but I, I, I was a only child and I didn't have nobody to fight with you for me. I had a mama that had to teach me how to fight. My mama told me, she said, boy, you, don't, you ain't got no more time to run in this house. Run and come out, they mess with you. You're going to have to stay in your ground. But, but something about, it's just like with God. When I know that I know that I know that God's got my back. I don't have to worry about what the enemy is doing. I don't have to worry about people who talk about me behind my back. I don't have to worry about what, what people say or do to me. Because I know God has got my back. Brother. His eyes never sleep or slumber. Sometimes our big brothers, they fall asleep and they don't show up in the nick of time. But God is always there. 
day. He never lost a battle. He never lost a case. He's a doctor that never lost a patient. Can I get a witness in here? Has he ever showed up right on time? And we know that all things work together for the good of them. I, I, I'm almost done, but I, I, I have to I have to tell us, uh, sometimes we get so comfortable. We, we've been living in the, in the lap of comfort. Uh, 